So I wanted to do a quick review of this uh, ISTT battery discharger, which I bought because I have struggled with discharging batteries for a few years. Um, the main issue is when you have LiPo batteries like these, that ideally you will charge them up and then the weather will be perfect and you'll go flying and you'll fly all your packs. And then when you come home, they're all roughly at storage charge, which is around 3.8 volts per cell, which is typically what they'll come down after a flight. So on a perfect day where you charge four batteries, the weather's good, you fly four times, everything's fine. Of course, the problem is that often the weather isn't good or you crash or run out of time or whatever. So you end up not flying the packs and they then come home full. Now, some people just leave them like that, but it's not ideal. And I know with the smaller, cheaper batteries, I've been pretty casual about looking after them. So the some of my original 2200s, I never used to worry about. I used to keep them full, but it definitely degrades the packs over time. If you're just flying a plane or a low current uh, usage, like a motor glider, it won't be an issue. But if you're flying a helicopter or quadcopters, they're much more demanding in terms of the current load, uh, especially with the smaller batteries where you're like mini quads, where they're really pulling out some big amps. So for those, you really need to discharge them if you haven't flown them. Um, the other problem I had was when I went up to the bigger 6S packs, uh, this is a 2650 I borrowed from Steve, but I was flying 5000s in my big heli and and a big the carbon cub plane that I crashed. So again, that was a real headache. So I had various solutions to this. The original was the light bulb, the bowl of death, which was some light bulbs I got from the pound shop connected into chockey blocks with um, a switch. So you could run either two or four, depending on how fast you wanted to run down the battery, which did work, but was terrifying in that this gets absolutely red hot and you sort of have to do a battery. You have to plug in like a little beeper so that you know when the battery's flat or, or set the, the drop off current. And I would basically have to sit and watch it and then leave quite a long time between the batteries to run them down, to, to let that cool down. So then I moved up to the bigger solution, which was a friend of mine, Dan, uh, welded up this frame, which takes uh, halogen light bulbs, a bunch of them. And then this is, they're all wired up on switches so you can turn them on in banks. Um, to the 6S, it, you could do it, it but it obviously it, it's generating a lot of heat and you still had to sit and watch it. Had a current meter on it so I could see the current draw. And this was what I've used for a long time. Um, and may, especially with the big batteries and the mini quad batteries, I would always diligently run them down to storage charge when I got home. Now, a lot of battery chargers will do a storage charge, but they have a very small discharge current capacity. So it's typically half an amp. So on a little battery like this, then that would run down to storage charge in you know an hour or an hour and a half. Obviously the bigger battery, it's gonna start to get ridiculous. And certainly with the big 6S5000 packs, you're looking at something like 10 or 12 hours to discharge them, which also is overheating that charger. And chargers are generally quite expensive. So you don't wanna sit them, them to sit cooking because that will probably damage the charger more than charging does because charging generates a much lower level of heat. Um, so yeah, so it's not ideal. So when I saw this uh, little ISTT charger, I thought it was worth a look. Um, the specs are that it'll do two to eight S batteries and it will run up to six amps, but there is an 80 watt limit. So you cannot discharge anything above a three S battery at six amps. So as you go up in voltage of the pack, your maximum current reduces. So for a 6S pack, somewhere around three and a half, maybe amps, maybe four. But either way, it's still a nice little unit. It's much smaller than I expected. It has an XD60 input and it has the buttons that you push. Um, it has cooling fans uh, to suck through this heat sink. Um, and it has a port which the, the, the web page I bought it from suggested you could plug in a USB lead to alter the cutoff voltages and other parameters, but you, the, you don't have the lead for that. And apparently people who have bought the lead say there is no software for this. So you pretty much have to use it as is. So it's set to cut off at 3.8 volts per cell, um, which is a perfectly sensible amount. So yeah, so let's, so just to show how this works, let's start with a mini quad pack. So you plug the pack in there and then nothing happens until you push a button. So then you can push the uh, cell button and that will just flash up and it's already set to 3S and it's already set to six amps. So I don't have to do anything else and after five seconds it will start running. Now this green light flashing means it's discharging the battery. The fan starts automatically at when you first turn it on, but then it seems to go into some kind of thermal cut in and out because when I was 
discharging a bigger battery, it would the fan would stop and then the case would heat up. And when it gets to about 40 degrees centigrade, which is sort of warm to the touch, the fan cuts back in and it cools back down again, which is perfectly fine. So yeah, so while this uh, light is flashing, that means it's discharging. And when it's completed, it will the green light will go solid and it will then beep for a minute to tell you it's finished and then it'll shut off. So this is really nice and neat and certainly much better than the light bulb solutions. Uh, so from that point of view, it's really good. Um, I did want to just check that it does actually meet the specs that it's supposed to. So I've rigged up a current meter. Um, so then what I will do is, again, I just push a button and it will come back to the last setting, which was 6 amps 3S, which is sensible. And a couple of things that are quite nice. One is that it's slow start. So you can see the fan has started, but the current draw starts off very low and it will gradually increase. So over about a minute or so, it will ramp up to uh, six amps. So, and you can see it's uh, pulsing a little bit. That's pretty normal, I suspect. The, um, this meter is probably polling and the load will be polling as well. So if they don't quite meet up, then it'll flip up and down. So yeah, so if I just jump to a minute or so, you'll see that uh, the current stabilizes. Okay, so this has been running for a couple of minutes now. You can see that it's stabilized at just around six amps. So, which is exactly what I'd expect for this 3S6 amp setting. Just as a sanity check, if I just stick a current clamp meter on there, it's reading pretty much the same, 5.6 amps. So that's all within what I expect. So yeah, so that confirms that it does do what it's supposed to. Um, this has been running for a couple of minutes and it's just literally, I can just feel a very slight bit of warmth, but as it runs, as long as the fan's running, it seems to peak at about 34 degrees. So it's warm to touch, but it's certainly fine to put on a table. Um, when the fan starts cutting in and out, it does get a bit warmer, but I never saw it go above about 40. Um, I mean, it's been running a couple of minutes now and it's currently at yeah 34 which is fine. I'll switch to a bigger pack and we'll just see how that goes. Right, so if I just swap over to a 6S pack, so this is a, uh, a 6S2650, which I've borrowed. So when you plug in a different pack, as soon as you push a button, it will be on the old settings. So you have to change that up. It doesn't detect automatically. Um, so that's 6S. In fact, it does say it's got an auto detect. So let's leave that, sorry. Let's leave that on 3S and just see what happens. Apparently it will auto detect the wrong voltage. Yeah, so it's just flashing red, so it can recognise that. Now what I suspect it can't recognise is if you put too high a voltage on. Um, but anyway, so that then is set on 6 amps. So that'll start, and you can see it's starting to discharge. Again, it'll slow start. But what we will see, if I just turn this round. Okay, so that's been running for a couple of minutes now, so it's got up to its maximum, which is about 4 amps on this... 6S pack. If I just plug in, I can just check the uh, battery voltage. So it's at 23 volts, and you can see that's discharging at 4 amps. And just to double check that, if I just stick the clamp meter on there, so that's reading 3.5 amps. So that, that's close enough to verify that to me. Yeah, so that's showing 4 amps at 23 volts, which, given 80 watts is supposedly the spec, 23 volts times 4 amps would be 92 amps, 92 watts, sorry. So yeah, and if we swap this over to watts, it's showing 92 watts. So yeah, so it looks to be doing what I expect. It's now, it's been running for a few minutes, it's pretty warm to the touch. It's now showing at about 35 degrees, 35.8. And it does get a little bit warmer. The fan will start to cycle in and out, um, but it seems to be uh, on a temperature sensor because uh, it, it, the body would heat up to about 40 degrees, which is, you know, is warm to touch, but not worrying. Certainly way less than the light bulb rigs. And then the fan would stop and then come back on and then stop. So, so there you have it. So I think it's quite a useful little toy. Um, it's about 25, 26 pounds. Um, I think for that, it's definitely worth it. I've certainly spent more than that on and, and a lot of hassle on the uh, light bulb rigs. And this is much neater. And it's a nice way that you can just, when you get home for the day, if you haven't flown all your packs, you can just set up. And typically if you're running mini quad packs like this, if you were putting um, these little 3S packs on, you could, eat, you, you could certainly run these down at six amps. That would do them no harm at all. 
Um, it's quite good for batteries, I think, to be loaded reasonably. So again, if you're discharging them on a balanced charger at half an amp, it's actually probably not brilliant for the batteries. Um, I think that if you want to get punch out of a pack, then you've got to, um, you know, you've, you, you've got to not baby them too much. Um, so yeah, so you can pop them on here on six amps for a 3S pack, and that would run this battery down in, um, in a reasonable time. I mean, if it was fully charged, uh, it will be effectively 1.3 amp hours. So you'd be looking at 1.3 divided by six would be uh, times 60 minutes. It would run down in about 12, 12 minutes. So yeah, you're looking at probably 10, 10, 15 minutes per battery to run down and then it'll beep and shut off. So you can you know, just stick them in front of you. Best not to leave them unattended, um, but you could certainly be watching the telly and have this going and it's not too noisy the fan that it would bother you. Um, generally, I always store these LiPos in little battery sacks and I will probably, I mean, not the mini quad ones, I wouldn't worry about discharging them out of a pack but the bigger packs probably I would, and I certainly would never leave them unattended. But um, this I think is a good product. Um, it's a shame about the USB connection and not being able to adjust the cutoff voltage, but to be honest, 3.8 volts as a cutoff is actually fine and probably what I would use anyway. Um, I will, uh, yeah, I'll just let it run down a pack and show you how it shuts down, and that'll be the end of the video. So that's finished. So it, the light goes solid and it beeps, and it's looking at. I can stop that. The fan had dropped off at the end. I'm pretty sure that it tails off the current towards the end because the fan stopped with a couple of minutes to go, and the case started to cool down already. It's actually just warming up a little bit now, but I think that's just heat soak. So yeah, so that battery is 3.8 volts on each cell. Uh, total 11.48 so that's perfect for storage um, the other thing I really like to use these little battery checker toys uh, to check after a flight that you haven't gone how much you've used because um, it gives you a rough percentage but also uh, if you push the mode button uh, when you first connect it you get the total pack voltage if you push mode again uh, it can cycle between various settings and this one tells you the max min so this is telling you the, the voltage gap between the strongest and the weakest cells. And as a pack ages, especially under load, this is what will show you that it's no longer a good pack. So this is a good pack. It's saying that between two and three, cells two and three, there's a 0 0.01 volt difference, which is amazing. That's, uh, that's a really good pack. Anything below about 0 0.1 volt is fine. Uh, what generally happens when a pack gets old is the center cell will tend to cook because it has less surface cooling than the outer edges so the really nice way to tell is if you put them under load which I used to do with the light bulb rigs but now you could do with this if you stick the pack under load you will see a large gap on that uh, max min